okay guys today our topic is scipy and uh, scipy is uh, one of the most preferred python library for the mathematics and uh, scientific programming uh, especially when you are using the python programming for data science and machine learning okay here we have the lot of uh, tools or you can say sub packages to use and to work on the mathematics and statistics and i'm not going to cover each and everything here because be a few of the topics we don't really need to depending on that okay so some of the topics we actually know uh, in the previous things okay the first thing is numpy basics right you should know little bit on the numpy basics because scipy which is the tool is actually built on the numpy okay so numpy is like a basic uh, a uh, numerical python library but scipy is a little advanced version of the uh, numpy so we have the full packaged uh, mathematics and probability and statistics uh, functions are available in this num uh, in scipy but I, we are not discussed some concepts in the previous sessions i want to ask some people here and it's one of the important question you may get at interviews and all okay what is that scalar what is the scalar what is the vector what is the matrix what is the tensor these are the four terminologies you should know when you are related to the uh, numerical libraries that is a numpy or scipy whatever it is what is the scalar this is the first question what is the vector what is the matrix what is the tensor uh, scalar is actually a single uh, single value exactly what is the vector uh more than one values uh we can't say like this because matrix is also more than a value so vector is a unidirectional is so what is a matrix it is a 2d array so vector is a single dimension array the matrix is a two dimensional array tensor is the n dimensional array as simple as we can say okay and coming to the point scipy sub packages this first one is a special package it is under the scipy scipy is the module or we can say main package under that there is a sub packages like oh, we we have your special so what is a special basically like it deals with uh, uh, special functions okay what are those special functions i will discuss with you programming way and the next one is the integrations so integrations this is also like uh, one kind of uh, important here we deal with the integration routines and also we have the optimization and also we have the something called signal processing and uh, linear algebra and uh, file operations there are so many interpolations cluster and constants and fourier transformations space now i'm going to their documentation to give a simple idea after that we'll start programming understanding the each and every concept guys so let me type here uh, scipy so yeah scipy is uh, you can see uh, scipy is actually like its combination of it's kind of an organizations okay num focus is the organization for the entire scipy ecosystem because this num focus is actually dealing with numpy scipy symbolic mathematics and ipython matplotlib pandas else let's get into this uh, documentation right so scipy so if you want to work on the scipy we need to install the scipy either you can go with the conda install scipy or we can use the pip3 install scipy so any any option is okay but i am going to click on this scipy now and uh, so we can see these are the things i was a little few minutes back i spoke so integration optimization interpolation and all so you can ask me the question is it really important for the data science guy it depends it depends if you are working on this something which is related to the uh, medical related uh, data science projects the signal processing is so important right uh, you are working something which is related to the uh, space space related thing right then we can go for the something which is related to the integrations some of the related to the interpolations it depends on the which area you are you are working at the data science projects that's where we are going to pick uh, and work on this and also there is a dedicated statistics uh, uh, the what i can say sub module in the scipy if you click this one you will you'll, you will see that lot of functions at the left side you can see here scipy is built on the numpy so everything is interlinked everything is uh, using but anyway we are going to have little programming now and we'll understand much uh, some concepts okay 
but i will talk in detail the statistic concepts because uh, the statistics are the two types guys inferential statistics and descriptive statistics and each and every type we deal with the discrete discrete data and continuous data but what is the discrete data what is continuous data we'll explore when it comes to the statistics way but we don't need to focus at this moment and that is the i planned very nice way how to learn the statistics and mathematics that subject is little different we are going to deal with now okay what i'm going to do right i'm going to open the uh, anaconda navigator so we can start writing the programming instead of talking so much of theory so let's let's focus on the uh, uh, notebook so okay programming basically i'm just clicking on the jupyter notebook so already i created one folder here so i don't want to waste the time so let's get into this so this notebook name is the scipy tutorial or we can say tut fine yeah so for example first i am importing this numpy so we can say numpy and uh, for example how to check the numpy version anybody knows here in the here especially when you are working into this cells can i use this command guys numpy dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore and enter okay so this is a numpy version basically so if you want scipy version we can also give the scipy dot underscore underscore version that's okay fine so let's get into that creating the uh, there is a four concepts here okay so let me insert the cell below i can say that s is equal to np okay i am not given the alias name right i will give the alias name here so np dot then we can say that array this is what the siddesh was telling so np dot array of 1 okay so if i go and enter s so okay because this is not executed before so i am executing now so array of array of 1 this is called scalar right if it is only one element in array i can say it is a scalar right now i want to create a vector so how can i create guys so i will give the v is equal to np dot array of then uh, you can take a, any any like you can take the list or the tuple anything is fine so one, one this is the 1 comma 2 comma 3 then v enter this is an a vector so you can take it into the like vertical direction or so basically vector talks about the direction okay is it you are going into the forward or backward or downward so vertic vector is always talks about the direction okay and moving to the matrix now so matrix is a two dimensional array so how to create a matrix in um, in 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 here and most important thing guys i am talking about uh, standards now so when you are writing the scalar and vector you are always defining in the lower case letters okay so when it comes to the matrices we always define into the upper case letters so let me write now m is equal to i am just writing now np dot then we can write uh, array so in the array we can take the two dimensional data so what i will do right i will take this entire thing is the list so inside the list again i will keep either list or a tuple right something like this i will create it so 1 comma 2 or we can say 3 comma 4 or we can say something like this of uh, 5 comma 6 can i create like this this is the two dimensional data or we can say two dimensional array i am going to enter this is a two dimensional array this is a vector this is a scalar and this is matrix so generally the matrix is okay we actually use uh, this way okay we actually denote with the upper case letters okay so this is something like this let's move on to the uh, so tensor i will talk when it comes to the tensor flow that is nothing but uh, n dimensional array when you talk about n dimensional array it is uh, not just uh, more than 2d okay more than 2d and uh, the when n can be anything so we can write so that is something which is related to the tensor we we'll, we are going to discuss about the tensor behaviors characteristics and which and everything when it comes to the tensor flow uh, neural networks when you dealing with that okay so moving to that another cell i am going to import now scipy so can i use like this guys import scipy and uh, now i want to check the version here scipy dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore okay 
So SciPy version is 1.3.0 because it's already installed in my local. If you're not installed directly, you can go to the uh, command prompt, Anaconda command prompt, enter the command called Conda install and SciPy. So then automatically this will be installed when you are connected to the internet, right? Now moving to the another cell here. So let's, let's now focus on the actual concepts of the SciPy, right? So let's let let me talk about some of the mathematical things here. There is a, one a sub package name is called a special. I'm going to use now the from scipy and dot to special and import. So in this, if you want to see what are the uh, functions are there inside this special, you can enter the tab. Okay, so you can enter the tab. You will see the list of uh, so maybe. I, I'm checking this one into the MacBook. If you are, if you are like um, working in the Windows system or different operating systems, already you can click on this help box. Sorry, not help. There is a here keyboard shortcuts is there, and you can click on this. All the keyboard shortcuts are there. You can just follow it. Okay. If you think like what information uh, you want to explore it here. Okay. And next one. So let's get into the topic here. SciPy dot special. For example, I want to calculate the exponential. So here all exponential is there. Exponential, just e power of e power of value and e, e and exponential base 10, exponential base 2, and, and also like trigonometric functions. Many things are there in this SciPy itself. So let me use exponential 10. Okay. So what does it mean, guys? If I go and use this exponential 10 of 4, uh, for example, if I give the 4, what is an answer? Is it 10 power of four, right? Am I correct or wrong? Let's go and enter here, 10 power of the four. Is it correct? All I see, okay, I will give now only two. So 10 power of two, it's in a hundred, right? So something similarly like this, exponential 10 is done. Okay, and also we can use exponential two and uh, we can write here exponential two of four uh, and uh, we can say uh, four. Now, big question comes in your mind. What is the deal here? Why we need SciPy? I can calculate the exponential using the normal Python pack, Python itself. There is what is the main deal you are de you are talking here? SciPy. Yes, SciPy is that main deal is that you can get the exponential of the array also. I Not just the Python power also. You can use like this one. That's what I'm saying that the power and all is you can use it only for the one variable. Now you can see this SciPy, you can calculate the exponential for the like more than values like this. Okay. So if I go and use this one, maybe I'm not keeping this one into the, uh, we have to keep this one a tuple array list, then only we'll get the output. You can calculate this, but just Python won't give this feature. Right, we have to use the SciPy to get the exponential of the sequence of elements. But you can do it even in the Python, but you have to write some extra code uh, manually, then only you can achieve it, right? So even this exponential 10, I've given only for two, but if you want to do it for the list, one comma two comma three comma four, and uh, this one, I'm going to keep it under the print statement because cell will actually print the last uh, executable statement you can see here. So that is the little difference, okay? So we can use the array or tuple or any data which you can pass, so, okay? Any anyway, data types is already spoken, right? So any questions here? It is the same case for the sign degree also, guys, okay? Uh, sign degree, so we have the sign uh, in, even in the normal, uh, there are some functions is already, we have it in math, for, math library, we have it in the uh, Python. Right, but why we need here again same story. Sign degree we use to calculate the multiple degree values. For example, we can say that 90 degrees and 45 degrees and 60 degrees, and you just go and enter. And but when you are writing this one, what is missing? Anybody tell me? Because uh, what is the problem? I mentioned the this one. Right, so it's an incorrect function name. Right, sign degree. This is I can calculate the uh, data for the multiple values at a time. Okay, sign C. Okay, or uh, okay. So let me say that sci pi is it there here? Sign pi dot special and import and do sign C right and 
uh, we'll see now. Yeah, it is there now. So C stands for the cardinal, okay? And um, so what I mean to say that the sign C is actually, a, uh, it is a cardinal function, which is usually basically to calculate the various signal processing. So here we can pass the number of degrees again. So we can say that sign C and uh, inside that we can pass the beat every two seconds. If you want to check the person's heartbeat, uh, I don't know exact guys, I don't want to, Tell this is wrong information, but it's trying to calculate some information about the person's health or something which is related to that one. So 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 67 degrees, something like this. So sign C stands for C stands for the cardinal, basically. Okay. It is a kind of signal processing for the humans when you are working on the healthcare projects. So if you are really building such kind of uh, uh, predicting the the huge uh, the, the the human so uh, health conditions and all so this this kind of functions we may use it okay and also this is having some other functions called the uh, the factorial but uh, again question comes to you hey, already there is a factorial in python why i need to use factorial again so very simple you are calculating the factorial for array of numbers here not just for one number so we can say that okay factorial and uh, we can pass your area of numbers. Can I pass? Okay, uh, you can pass like one comma two and uh, or three or something like this, you can calculate it. But there is one more uh, attribute name is called the exact. So exact is equal to true. I'm just going to mention here, enter. So exact is equal to true mention, you will get the non-floating values. will will produce only like uh, uh, integer values. If you say exact is equal to false, by default it is a false, we'll get the, the values is which is related. I mean, basically these are the, the float values, okay? So this is about the factorial numbers. You can calculate the factorial for the n number of elements, eight comma 99, something like this. We can calculate, we'll get the output the same, okay? So next important function, every data science should know about this function name is called the softmax. Have you know about the softmax, guys? Anybody in this session? Yes. Yes. That, what is that? I think okay. I've heard it. Yeah, tell, 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 tell. go ahead. Yeah, proceed, yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 wait. Uh, so softmax is a function that uh, uh, means uh, when you have, uh, I think, uh, multiple, multiple predictions you want to do, then uh, you can use that library for uh, to uh, give the classification into that. Then, if you have input of uh, like uh, two two like two values, so they, they it depends on means uh, how many values you are predicting, so it will be giving you the output of it. What I know about it, it is one of the activation functions in neural network. Okay, yeah, basically, you both are correct in the two different uh, definitions. Yes, softmax is one of the activation function for the neural networks. Point number one. And the point number two, yes, we can use it for the multinomial uh, probability distributions. For example, when you are working on the classification problems, when you are cal when you are predicting the multi classifications, not just like one A, B, C, or red, red, green, blue, something like the classifications when you are predicting it, this softmax is going to be useful. Then what is this? Of course, softmax, softmax is an activation function. We can use it in the neural networks. This is going to help us to identify the multi-classification problems. All is fine. Then what is this? What is the mathematics behind this? Now I'm going to explain to this one. Maybe I'm going to go and spend some time on this because little important this one, how internally it is calculated. So first, softmax is a function which is there in the SciPy special uh, sub package and uh, we can pass some data. For example, if I'm going to give only one value, softmax of one, we'll get the one. If I'm going to give the value is two, you'll get the value is one only. When I give the three, you'll get the one only. When I give the like a 300, you'll get the one only. So the, what does that mean? Softmax, any value which you calculate, okay, single value, it will produce the default value is the 1.0. But I will tell you the formula here, how it is calculates and all, but let, let, let's have a look into it. Now I'm going to give the more than two values here. So instead of 300, I will give the one comma two. Now you can see there is a two values we are seeing it now. So softmax means 
it is actually like uh, exponential remember always in your mind softmax is deals with exponential functions what is the exponential function so for example how this is calculates you know internally this is the e power of e power of 1 and uh, divided by okay and again uh, e power of 1 plus e power of 2 that is the one this is the sum actually summation of k k number yeah, yeah summation of the k number so basically we are calling calculating the exponential values just imagine in the neural networks why we need exponential functions why why it is so significantly we use in the calculating the act activation functions so this is very important uh, exponential data is very important guys we need to see tomorrow when you have the 1.4 millions of records when you are going to train the model we need to see that data how far the data is exponential is it exponentially increasing are exponentially decreasing so we need to understand the data right so that's where this softmax is going to be useful a lot now we got this e1 divided by e1 plus e2 and again this is the this value again you are calculating the e2 right so e power of 2 basically here 2 i have given for example if you go 21 so you can change in one to the 21 this value is also 21 right e power of 21 divided by then e power of 1 plus and e power of anybody tell me 21 again like this so shall i prove that one with some uh, numpy code let me prove this code okay can, can we prove that with uh, uh, the above exponential function that's what i'm going to prove it now okay so a is equal to we can say that np dot so exponential function is actually there in the numpy right so np dot exp am i correct Siddesh? so we can give this zero this is the a value okay so instead of giving the a zero i'll give the one here okay the previous this value is two because you are seeing output is so uh, actually for two I'm going to copy this this uh, output here, just paste it here, and we are going to compare it a little later. So exponential of one, and the b is equal to n p dot exponential of uh, next value is two. Am I correct? So now we got a and b. I want to prove this one. Result is equal to now you tell me a divided by a plus b. Am I correct? Anybody have any questions here? Yeah, yes, but actually what will happen now? A upon A would will be like it will be calculated first. So I believe you should put Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to what you mean to say that. For example, if I go and enter this result, so you'll get the 88.38. But we have to get this value. It's because of you are missing the parentheses. You have to give the parentheses here, and you will see same answer, whatever I got for the the result so if you change this one to the uh here uh, uh okay here's one is there right this is the result i want to calculate the result too can i say like this anybody is any confusion let me know this time i will give the b and divided by a plus b and i will say that this result too i want to print so if i go and print this result to exactly the same value whatever we got in the second thing so what actually we are doing it here softmax is mainly behind the scenes in the sense so softmax internally uses the exponential function so when you give these values like here i'm giving the only one comma two you can give one two three four five or 76 78 or some other values any values you can give here but it is basically calculating the exponential okay so internally it uses the exponential function and the sum of the exponential so basically exponential value divided by so sum of the exponential values that k is depends on the how many values you are actually given into this softmax function okay so any questions here guys is it understandable like if you're not understanding just ping on the chat box if you're not able to speak. yeah it's understandable yeah yeah uh, here we are getting the softmax that. function Hmm. Can we mention numbers in under the list or tuple also we can mention? You can mention, see, soft, basically, okay, that's a good question. So basically you can give any, uh, it's like a uh, sequence object or we can give into the normal integer value also. So for example, now I'm giving into this, it is also fine. Tuple we can give, list we can give. Okay, I will try with the uh, set now, okay. 
and uh, I will change this one to the set. I can go and execute this. What is what is the what is the issue here? We are giving in the set. When you go to this one, it is uh, not supported because yeah, it, is not, it is not index based. Right? Exactly. So what if I'm going to do with this uh, like uh, float values instead of giving the uh, integer values? Let me go because in the real time data we don't expect always the uh, the plain integer values, right? Mostly the values are in the float floating values. So now I'm going to execute this code and uh, because okay, it's because of I'm not keeping into the any sequence data. So that is the reason. Let me enter close this one. Yeah. Can see. This is how it works, guys. Basically, so we can give the float value and uh, uh, this value also. But that's how this value will be calculated. So, any questions? Have uh, anybody have any questions here? Yeah, one question. Actually, like uh, in this function, we have passed two values, right? One point mm. five and two point two. Mm. So, uh, how will we manually calculate if we have only one value in softmax function? If it is only one value means it's e power of, so what is the normal in mathematics? e power of exponential of any value. What is the value? It's a one only, right? Correct. Yeah, that's how it is producing the one. Okay. Is that question is answered? Like your question is different. To... No, no, I, I, I got it. Actually, I was calculating it. So I asked. Okay, I'm going to repeat this one. Okay, uh, I got to. Uh, Okay, so what I mean to say that guys is this softmax is the activation function point number one point number two softmax is actually used for the in the multi classification problems, okay, especially in the neural networks. And the third point is softmax internally uses the exponential functions. Okay, so when I say that softmax off, it can give any value here. Okay, not only the tuple, we can give normal integer value, we can give the float value, or we can give the tuple values, or we can give the list values, something like this, not the set. Okay, so when you are giving those values, you will get the output. Okay, so that output is actually based on the exponential theory. So what is the what is the actually the formula here? Okay, let me go to the internet and show you in better way. Okay, because end of the day, you need to understand this one. Okay, softmax formula. Okay. I don't know if it comes here. Yeah, this is a softmax formula. So here, what is saying this? This is the exponential of the values. So you, for example, you are giving the, okay, Z is actually like, you are giving the one, two, three. First, it is the exponential of one divided by exponential of one plus exponential of two plus exponential three. The, again, when you are calculating the exponential two, then exponential two divided by exponential one plus exponential two plus exponential three. So basically, we are calculating the ex, uh, yeah, softmax for the each and every value. Okay, so it is not like sum of the values. Okay, it is the one one soft one value for the one value which you were given in the array. Okay, so that is how it is there here. So you can also see in this uh, softmax is actually represented by using the sigma, and you are giving the input vector. Of course, right, it's a vector only. We basically we give standard exponential function of the input vector and number of classes in the multi-classifiers. Okay, because I'm not talking in the in the in the perspective of the uh, what I can say that uh, neural networks, but the K is actually talks about the classifications, like uh, is it the three classification, four classification, six classification, how many classifiers are there in that? But don't look at this uh, at this moment. We are going to talk this one later. But look at only the formula here. So e power of x are and divided. I mean divided by sum of the e power of x plus e power of y plus and e power of z. Something like this. Sum of the attributes. Okay. I hope it is uh, you understand. And to prove this one, we have the exponential function in the numpy. So that's where we are using the numpy dot exponential of this one. And again, b is equal to numpy dot exponential of two. And after that, uh, the formula we are applying it here. Okay. So a exponent. I mean, because it is exponential one divided by exponential one plus exponential two. That result will be this first one. Okay. Again, we are saying that exponential of uh, two that is divided by exponential one plus exponential two. I hope I am not confusing guys. This is very straight away formula. There is no much uh, deep dive into it. Basically. So yeah. is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, it is clear. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, this, this is okay, but uh, in that uh, Google, that is another formula, is there, right? Uh, mm. Mm. It is not another formula, same formula only, but uh, this uh, G and uh, this J, K, I will talk little later. Those okay. are the parameters that mentioned below, and uh, uh, the below, the denominator part is basically the summation of your all the uh, uh, exponentials, considering your uh, 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 the input you have given. Can I explain this formula? Go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, as we can see, this sigma over here, na, it's uh, equal to softmax. Okay, so uh, in the previous example, like uh, we calculated a uh, softmax of one comma two, right? So z vector will take the uh, take the sequence one comma two, and I would be the number of like uh, I would be total number of elements in that vector. Okay, so then equals to e raised to uh, uh, it will like uh, run through each uh, each number. Then uh, first uh, suppose i equals to zero. Then at zero, uh, just I'm just uh, telling that for explanation. Okay, it's not like that. But suppose i is the first value, then uh, it will uh, take e raised to one. Uh, then z will be the value of that particular vector. And uh, this i would be the index of uh, the number which we we will be taking. So it would be like uh, e raised to one upon. Then we will take summation of all the elements inside that vector, which will start from one. This j is index of index of the uh, elements inside that vector. Okay, it's not the value. It will be the index basically. So like uh, e raised to uh, z j right. So it will be e raised to one, then e raised to two, then e raised to three, and it will go on until uh, the last index is reached in, inside the uh, softmax, uh, whatever we have passed in the vector. Suppose you have passed three values, then it will go till e raised to one plus e raised to two plus e raised to three. And if you have passed four, then it will go one, two, three, four, and likewise. Yeah. Okay. So I will give you one small suggestion, guys. If you're trying to understand these kind of formulas in the data science, you will stop somewhere. What does it mean, Raja? Yes, because we can't go and remember all these things. You should remember softmax is something which is activation function. Basically, we use the exponential formulas. That's it, simple. See, if you go and read, okay, this is for output vector, this is for this one. Okay, this is the first time you are seeing this formula. Okay, fine. But the end of this three, year, three months of, uh, the continuous uh, discussion, we may encounter with the 100 formulas. So we are not going to remember all these 100 formulas, but you should get the point here, okay? So you, because most of the people don't know here what is the multi-classifiers, right? And why the K is given. And because I said like softmax is mainly for the multi-classifiers, multi-class distribution, probability distributions. So we can talk there and maybe this Z hyphen Bob, what is this sigma? Sigma we actually use for the standard deviation. Why I again speak sigma is using here because you'll get confusion when it goes through the deep dive into the uh, max and uh, stats. Anybody tell me why again sigma came here? Anybody? So that's something, see, uh, this is a very fresh, we are seeing that we can understand, okay, somehow in better way. But when you go into the after row, 30 days of our uh, data science sessions, definitely will be confused, okay? But like, of course, someone from our team, like RLs, I have any one Excel sheet, I already prepared all these formulas, we'll share with you. But this is, uh, remembering is a little difficult, okay? So what I mean to say that softmax means exponential formulas. Simple trigger point, okay? So rest are all like, uh, you can go and refer the internet or like some notes and all, you get it done basically. So I don't know if it is really useful suggestion or not, but that's how I do, but otherwise remembering the so many things is difficult. If you go to the TensorFlow, there is so many activation functions out there, right? Okay, so there are so many, and even if you go to the uh, PyTorch also, they are created other activation functions and uh, neural networks. So similar little differences are there. We can, it is relatively difficult to remember all these things. But remember, softmax internally uses the exponential formulas. So we actually think like exponential is not capable, right? I mean, initially we are not really focusing. Now, see, exponential is taking very big role in this case. Okay.
fine moving to the next one so these are all like special methods there are so many sp special methods if i go to the scipy you will really shock because uh, scipy is the only one it will take one year to understand all these functions because it is not just like okay we can finish stuff within a day or two days or three days this content is the huge content they covered all the things you can see the special methods at the left side and all these things like we okay here matplotlib bundle they are using that's okay we are going anyway we have the topic going to discuss but there are so many things guys in the special methods there are a lot of content is there it is not we can go and spend time uh, like uh, to understand everything it is not really required also okay i selectedly uh, i actually collected only few functions which are really needed for our uh, uh, ai projects our data science projects okay so moving to the next one concept is called uh, another sub package name is called the constants okay so let me go now this is little important these constants are so from instead of special here i am going to use the some something is called the constants so let me go now so i entered the tab so it's showing the constants now so what are the constants are there anybody guess can i use this pi here pi. so import yeah. okay generally people say pi only i am also going with the same thing so this same pi i have it in the math uh, in the math module am i correct yes math dot pi yeah from math uh, import pi can i say like this anyone anyone have any issues here the print of pi which pi okay so i don't want to use that okay i will keep it like that only so dot py i am using it directly here so to make the difference is there any difference guys with these two pi is pi only right whether you do with the scipy or mathematics and all okay mm -hmm. so math dot pi okay i'm yeah. going to enter hmm. can you tell me here okay because of uh, So we got now three point one four exact the same value, right? There is no any differences. Why again? Scipy is bought. Anybody guess? Any differences? I think the performance, sir. Okay. Performance is one factor, uh, but there is no uh, much differences with the uh, value representation. Yeah. yeah. Not. okay but since because we are talking about entire thing is the mathematical one and they are ac actually included this pi just because there are so many other constant values are there if you are just leave it this pi i mean again you have to go and import the math and all okay so this is not i said you can go to their documentation they only mention these words okay what they are saying that it's because they added there are so many numerous constants are there if you exclude this one again you have to go and import this math and do it so instead of that you can directly use it but there is no much differences here okay and more importantly okay for example if you are working on any aeronautical projects if you want to calculate the speed of light not aeronautical something related to the different projects i want to calculate the speed of light is it possible guys so i am going to use this this one speed of sound okay and uh, we can see the speed of sound all these things i can calculate here so what is the speed of light anybody guess 3.8 into 10 power 6 wow, that sounds good for a physics student it looks like okay yeah this is the value of course whatever you said is correct only this is the exact value they are mentioning the uh, numerical way and the speed of sound okay so is it really important yes it depends on the project if you are using it okay it's needed okay no need of looking for the uh, because we have to rely on one package right so these are all like extra mathematical and physical physics based uh, uh functions we have it so any other things which can we can use it for there are so many things guys if you do uh comma and uh, tab you can see there are so many things are there here right blob and boltzmann the calories and so many things degree electronic electron mass so tomorrow if it depends on the project okay if you are working on any any project which is related to the something quantum physics or something which is related to the aeronautical engineering or aeronautical projects then you don't need to worry about it we have this one for example what is the h now i am going to print off the h h is our i think if i am not wrong no 6.64 yeah what is the h i actually no don't know 
uh, it's uh, like uh, it's much. Much. yeah just give me a minute I'll, i'm remembering hmm. it's it it is planck's constant planck constant okay. i think uh, planck planck constant or stranger's equation planck constant i believe planck. that h i think uh, if i am not wrong it is uh, no no i think small h only okay fine yeah correct i thought it is uppercase letter h okay fine yeah planck constant okay yeah there is again uh, we have there are so many things we have the sigma is there k is there elementary charge is there okay if i remember correctly speed of light also mentioning in the small c let me go and try this if it really works or not the print of c okay go and enter i think both the values are same here yeah so c is also small c is also mentioned with that same only this is a constant value this is a constant string value this is a constant character value okay something like that both are same only because uh, if you can ask me why they are two different versions there is uh, i think uh, this speed of light is going to be decommissioned in the upcoming version this, this small c comes from the e equals to mc square equation yeah um, and one more thing, thing this is if if not every if uh, it's it's not the case that everybody will know that speed of light is denoted by c right so i feel they have and uh, one more thing uh, this is going to be deprecated uh, speed of light they are going to delete it from the upcoming versions okay so initially they 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 are keeping this one at the uh, beginning versions but later in the future version they are going to deprecate it so in i think in the recent versions recent in the sense not just uh, oh, two three months back if you go and verify the documentation they clearly mention this speed of doc, speed of light which is going to be decommissioned in the upcoming versions but anyway uh, because that is the reason guys we need to verify always the which version we are using it so project to project it may vary and some functions may not work in the uh, older versions or newer versions that you already know it right i i wanted to like uh, tell a, a bit of fact about speed of sound since it has already come over here this 340.5 na it's not the like it's a general value but there uh, there are two uh, there are two speed of sound uh, one is in dry air and one is in wet air in dry air it's 343 meter per second yeah and basically uh, in wet air means when there is humid climate right so at that time it get reduced uh, it get reduced to 340 that is uh, proved by newton no i don't know that but yeah, yeah. it's something like this proved by newton yeah i learned that in 12th standard yeah <laughs> okay yeah just okay, uh, yeah. Um, just amount of fact nothing like important <laughs> Yeah, it is all important in the sense it depends on the yeah, project. Fact, okay. Yeah. So from SciPy constants and uh, import and uh, so then we can give another constants also there. I will finish off this one. So tab better I will use the tab. Maybe any spelling mistakes. The hectare and uh, we have the any okay. I think here we have the. hour and uh, minute so these are all like is there guys if you if you want to use it in your project you can use it there is a day and you can also use the pound if i am not if the, whatever i remember i am just entering it but you can go and check the documentation but the point you can grab from here there are constants in constant values in the scipy which are related to the physics and also related to the quantum physics are related to the aeronautical space related one all related one so everything is the math related one probability related one all the constants are defined here time related all the constants are there in the scipy okay so i think you you got the point so all this we can use it tomorrow if your project is demanded we can use this this one so right now the kmh and uh, if you want to use the hectare i think it is going to be 1000 square meters or something and uh, a print of this and uh, hour hour is actually mentioned in the seconds here okay if i am not wrong okay something like this and even minute is also in seconds day is also in the seconds pound pound i don't know 400 something right kg anybody knows about the pound one pound is equal to Three seventy seven. I don't know, no guys. The quantity pound, I little confused. So, but anyway, these are the values. We'll get it from the um, this constants. Okay, the special method, special package, and the constant sub package. 
And there are other things also like, for example, let's focus on the uh, linear algebra. Linear algebra also there here, okay? So linear algebra, so let me take one simple thing. Uh, we actually talks about, uh, there is the equations, right? When you want to create equations, x plus 3y plus uh, uh, 6z is equal to 20 and 2x plus some, some values will have it. So how, okay. these, how we can compute these, uh, uh, these equations? So we need to try to solve the linear algebra system, right? So let me go and use it now. And uh, first thing, let me write what is the problem I'm going to solve. For example, x plus 4y and plus 6z is equal to, for example, 10. And uh, again, uh, this is uh, again x plus, and uh, I'm randomly typing it, 6y and uh, 3z is equal to 11. And the last one is the like uh, 3x and plus 5y plus 6g and again i'm going to six you for no problem you can say this one is the 34 some some values i picked up okay these are the three different equations we have it right so how to create these equations in the um in in our python numpy coding anybody guess so what i will do right uh, we will take entire this one into the array and i'll say that uh, numpy dot and uh, array so we are going to calculate this one so in this array i am going to mention about these values so we can take in the first uh, this entire thing is the list so inside the list again the first list i'll say that one that is the x then four then six six hmm? correct right then yeah, uh, yeah. next again uh, it's then comma hmm. next uh, one comma sorry six and uh, three if i'm not wrong yeah go ahead and the next uh, one is the three i'm i'm these values guys i'm giving now what does these are coefficients right if i'm not wrong yeah, yeah. Okay. three five comma six Please. yeah you guys are like recently graduated you well remember <laughs> so remembering these things from the because we the people who has the decade years of experience, I don't think so they can remember all these maths. Okay, the B is equal to, then uh, we'll specify the another array that is for the 10, 11, 34. Am I correct? Hmm? So yeah. Can, am I correct? yeah. So 10, 11, 34. Uh, you can write anywhere why we need to follow the same. So 10, line 10, 11, 34. Is it correct, guys? No, I think we should put a, a particular number into list because exactly, we want exactly, exactly. Otherwise, what number. will happen, right? This won't it be considered. Treat it, treat it as a one day array only. Exactly. Anyway, you are numpy guy, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 10, 11, 34. So this is all. So this is the equation I converted into the math, uh, our numpy. Uh, code uh, python code okay or numpy array so whatever the terminology you say now a and b is there why i've written here what i'm going to do i'm going to calculate the what x and y and z can i do it what i'm going to do now guys we'll have to equate it right hmm. then how to do it what i'm going to do now what we can do in generally these equations anybody guess we have mm, maybe we'll mm. yeah this i remember this thing we'll have to like multiply a into x y z column vector x y z equals to b mm. and what you are going to solve it that is what my question is Eigen okay hmm? eigenvalues we need to file a uh, find the value of x y z so mm. uh, normally we we'll solve like a, a, when, when i was in 12 standard we saw like uh, like it is known as simultaneous equation exactly right so uh, we need to solve and find the value of x y z so we need to multiply uh, uh, such that such a value such that uh, x coefficient should be matched to each other and uh, uh, from all the equation same as with y same as with z and we need to subtract that then we will be getting all those values then we need to divide that and each if you get x value then you need to imp uh, uh, equate into some some of the equation, then you, you should buy. Similarly, 
Yeah, like, similar. Similarly, x and y will be think, equated uh, in some Raja, equation. I think like. Hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, what I'm thinking actually, I don't think like everybody will be able to remember that mathematics. So you can just go ahead. But what we'll do over here is we'll multiply the array, uh, the 3D array, uh, like sorry, the 2D array. Uh, the variable a with uh, the list of unknown coefficient. Unknown See, my variables. question is very simple. No explanation. Very simple. What we are going to do with these equations? Are we going to are going to find the x value, y value, z value, or anything else? You are going to do it. No, same thing. Right. That's what simple. <laughs> so what process procedure and all? I don't care about it. I in the sense now you also because. we are a programmers we don't go and spend time like calculating and all this writing the logic and all we don't need it because we have scipy okay so i am going to use this now from scipy and dot so it's linear algebra so we can say that linear algebra and import the next what is the function which is going to help us uh, in the sense so we can use the solve function okay there is a solve is the function name Is it correct or not, guys? I don't know. It is solve. It is there. Solve is there because I remember. Okay. Result is equal to then we can say that solve and we pass these equations. So this will solve everything for you. We don't need to worry about it. Okay. But result can enter. This is the value. The x value is this one. Y value is this one. G value is this one. Are you joking, Raja? No, I'm serious. This is x value. This is the y value. This is the g value. Yeah, that might be. Right. So you don't need to spend too much of time scr scratching your head or writing so much of logic for these kind of things. We have scipy. So there is the equations here. I'm keeping these equations values. These values into the a and the b because the solve function, which is a linear algorithmic function, especially when you are going to calculate the x, y, z. Uh, from the uh, what I can say that linear equation. So this is one linear equation, another linear equation, third linear. Now question comes to you in your mind: Is that only three linear equations? No, you can pass six linear equations. No problem. You can pass seven. You can pass eight, ten, fifteen. Also, it's okay because in the real time we don't give three equations, right? We'll give the so much of data. So SciPy is ready to do that action for you, but we have to pass always this. Uh, a value and b value that is equal to before is the a value this is the one these values and after equal to this is the b value so this is nothing but an array you are just keeping these values into the array the result will be produced but is there any proof you are saying that is there any can can you prove that one so i am going to write simple function you need to understand this one okay so you can use the print statement or like directly you can go with that so what i am going to do right i have a dot can i use the in this case so uh, a result i am planning to use it here okay let me use the result and uh, a dot result then um, equal to equal to b dot function guys a dot of result okay what is a dot function in numpy it's a numpy function right right correct right it's a numpy function a dot of result what is a dot function anybody guess anybody tell me I did not tell. You guys tell now. I know that. Anybody, guys, remember yesterday? I think in the last two days se session we spoke about this dot, right? Array multiplication. Exactly. Yes, correct. So dot is actually multiplication. Uh, uh, that what I can say that symbol, or we can say that uh, operation which we actually use. Yeah, multi multiplication or array man array multiplications we can use. Now a dot and result and minus b. You can b. Yeah, right, you're right. A I'm going to enter. Zero. So when you get the zero, means your equation is correct. I mean the result is correct. detected correct. Correct. Yeah. Is it useful, guys? Yes, it is useful um, because when when you are dealing with uh, what is there, that regression problems uh, and uh, much deeper into that. But I will I will I will come back with this one. when you are going to talk about the machine learning algorithms so this math is important uh, it is going to be useful a lot but remember it's a very simple right 
first I explained about these equations. Then after that, we are just keeping those data into the arrays. And after that, we are doing the using the solve function. Solve function is solving everything for us. We are not doing anything here. And after that, we are just checking this result is correct or not. So A dot of result minus B, and we are getting the values is zero. Hence, it is proved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in, college, in school days, this is the only thing, right? Hence, it is proved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So any questions, guys? Please see here. I uh, it's not about. Uh, I'm just telling. I am understanding. Any anybody is not understanding, please let me know. That is we, the main. We motto. can we can also pass polynomial uh, equation in that, right? Yeah. Which equation? And uh, that that can be responsible also for polynomial regression. Yes. Right. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can pass it. See, this is not just meant for only three X, Y, Z. We can give these multiple values also. So any questions, guys? Any questions from anyone, please go ahead. Okay. There are so many things I'm not uh, uh, giving a time to speak many things here, but Definitely, we are going to talk in upcoming sessions, especially when you're dealing with the um, statistics concepts, okay? But again, uh, so I'm not talking about linear algorithm. I'm going to stop it here only, but there are other few methods. We'll, we'll speak later in, when, when we are actually going to talk about the concepts, okay? And that time I'm going to use the SciPy and also other libraries, you'll get some idea. Now, how many of you know what? There is another module name called stats modules. Stats models. Anybody knows here? I've heard about it. That mm. I'm going to I've use also, it. Uh, I've also used it. Yeah, I've, I've used it. Anybody is using, okay, apart from you, anybody is using it's a stat model? I was wondering, I thought you guys know about TensorFlow. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm just moving to the next point, guys. How to calculate the mean, median, mode, uh, something called harmonic mean, uh, geometric mean. Do you heard about these names? Yes. Yes, yes. Sounds good. Okay. So here yeah, I'm going to tell you some fact. Okay. The mean, which is there, we can use it in the NumPy. Mean, which is there in the statistics module. Statistics is one of the inbuilt module in Python. I hope you know it. Right. You don't know statistics model? Oh my God. Okay. So mean, next one mean, this is I can calculate in the pandas. The mean, which I can say that in the sci-fi, what is this drum? So you should know about this mean. The mean concept will come in the numpy. The mean concept will also we can see in the statistics. The mean also this function, which is there in the pandas. The mean is also there in the sci-fi. So you should know the differences. This is an assignment to you. Okay, why mean is there in the NumPy? Is that we are applying on the array? If the mean is there in the statistics, what? First of all, what is the statistics? And the second thing is the mean is there in the pandas. Are you going to do it with the data frame and the series is the question. The mean here in the SciPy, are you dealing with the again NumPy array? So these are the questions, okay, we need to ask ourselves. So I'm going to show you something on the statistics module. Statistics C, even, if I go to this, I will not take much time. Just, uh, you know about it, right? Statistics model, guys. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I know in pandas why that, uh, what, what is the use of that statistics? I know that. Not in pandas I'm talking about. Okay. So stats.py. Okay. So this is a two minutes only. I won't take much time. So here, if you go to the import, okay, so you can say that statistics, it is an inbuilt, uh, uh, what I can say, this is a, one of the inbuilt uh, library, okay, uh, in Python itself, no need of any installations, nothing. And if you go to this uh, print of, uh, so you can say that statistics dot, you can see there is a fast mean and geometric mean, harmonic mean, mean, median, mean grouped, mode, multi-mode, normal distribution, okay. I like this probably, this is like population standard deviation, population variance, quantiles, statistics error, standard deviation variance, and all is there, okay. 
So these functions, like only few functions, they are listed in the uh, here. And this, uh, the, the, the mean, there are so many means you are looking at here, right? Normal mean, fast mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean. Okay, so this fast mean is actually launched in 3.7, if I'm not wrong, go and verify it. Let me see this here, there is no documentation. Okay, actually this F mean is launched in the 3.7 onwards. Is a little faster than the normal arithmetic mean and it computes the i mean basically you can see convert the data to the floats and computes the arithmetic mean you know right what is the mean but anyway i'm going to explain this mean in the uh, statistics concepts the mean is going to calculate it with the populated population data and also sample data there is a two types of the data in the statistics right we actually take the continuous do you remember do you know about this so basically we use the uh, we calculate this uh, uh, the mean for the population data population means whole data entire india population assume that see when when you are going to uh, tell the people uh, like uh, this guy is going to elected this year this elections and all we don't take uh, entire people opinions right it is very difficult to take the entire people's opinion again 100 150 crores people are there in india you can't go to the each and every person and collecting that who we are going to vote and all this is not possible really speaking so that time we don't consider the population data we consider the sample data okay there is a huge difference between the population data and sample data so we take the sample data based on the sample data we are going to presume that okay this is guy is going to be win with the so much majority that's where like normal distribution and uh, we are getting some information called hypothesis testing these are the things will come so you should understand what data you are using actually in your real time projects is that the sample data is that the population data but we'll speak that one that is the reason here also you can see when i say control enter there is something called p variance p variance means population variance it's normally variance you see that is called sample variance you can see the population standard deviation but you see normal standard deviation. so normal standard deviation is like uh, uh, what I can say that uh, uh, sample standard deviation and uh, the, the P stands for the population standard deviation. So that's where this is going to be differentiate a lot, guys. You can see here the written the square root of the population variance. Okay. But again, I'm telling you that we are going to discuss in detail what is this and how it is going to be calculated and everything. So I'm just showing this. There is a statistics model in Python. We can use it, but if you want more information about the statistics model, real Python website is explained very well. Okay, so go into this statistics and real Python. You can type. I like this uh, uh, this article. This guy has done very well uh, for the statistics. Go and read read each and every line, which is really important. Uh, and this is a helpful to you. They already mentioned the what is the approaches. There is a descriptive statistics read this documentation this is really helpful guys so you can see here python statistics are there numpy is there scipy is there pandas is there matplotlib is there but how we can use it to get into this all these things are there guys so yeah, when you have some time tomorrow day after tomorrow go and read about these mean weighted mean geometric mean harmonic mean but definitely i will explain you all these things in detail with the diagrams in upcoming sessions but anyway uh, if you are so much curiosity to understand what is this, just go and read. I'm going to copy this link and paste it into the chat box. And also we'll keep it in the video description when I'm sharing it. Okay, yeah. Any I questions here? Harmonic mean and uh, like uh, weighted mean both are different. I was in uh, understanding that both of them are uh, similar because in decision tree, uh, I think uh, harmonic mean, uh, no, weighted mean is used, right? So I came to know now that harmonic mean and weighted mean both are different. Hmm. These are the ones. But anyway, I will talk. So don't, uh, uh, okay, think too much on this, people who don't know, uh, because uh, we are going to discuss uh, statistics and uh, uh, maths and probability in detail, concept by concept, with the diagram. I'm going to spend so much time on the stats and maths only because that's where you'll improve the lot of, I mean, you will also get interesting things on the, uh, uh, I mean, AI. So this is one module is there, go and explore it, but I will take this model when it comes to the actual concepts of, concepts of the statistics. 
the till that time i have not go into this because you can go and verify this so moving to the uh, our programming now so i'm talking the useful one or like uh, something else uh, talking no, in this no no it's useful really useful yeah okay so this is the one you see the differences between the mean with numpy statistics pandas and scipy this is one of assignment for us okay i don't know please someone please take it seriously and uh, when you have some time read you no need to submit anything here just read the differences what is what is in numpy what is in statistics what is in pandas and scipy okay now i'm going to use this same statistics so the, for example from Sci scipy and uh, dot so just enter your stats and import this is a very big sub model guys so many things are there here okay and uh, you can uh, look at this look at this there are so many things are there and for example if you want to calculate the mean okay this one i you don't want okay so this mean is there for example if i say that mean of and it's a function basically i'm going to give this one comma two comma three i'm going to calculate this one so what is this error is that mean is not available here anybody guess if i go and enter here tab tab hmm the mean is not there right remember it's one of the question basically we'll get it the mean is available in the numpy if you want advanced mean like geometric mean harmonic mean then we can come to the scipy i already solved one problem for you okay there is a mean normal mean which is there in the numpy when you are going to talk about uh, advanced means like h mean this h mean is not there in the numpy you have to depending on the scipy there is a dependency that's that time you have to come to this scipy and deal with this so now so this is the h mean and i can write it now this h mean this value will be calculated don't ask me how this value is calculated i will explain you into the actual statistics because i need to go through the i explain the population and all but you remember there is h mean and geometric mean is available in this so what is the mode anybody knows here mode do you know about the mode For example, one comma two comma three comma four. When I say enter, there is no mode result because one only. But when I give the any duplicated value here, you will get the uh, the mode is four. If I give, I am reading the chart. Repeated exactly. You are right. So repeatedly. So if I give the three three, now three is two times is repeated. Four is two times repeated. You will get the first time whichever the value is repeated, that value only will come. mode is nothing but number of occurrences of the given value so how many times the value is occurred but it is only talks about the first occurrence so 1 2 3 3 comes two times so that is time that is the reason it is saying the three okay so for example <coughs> excuse me if i give the four again and go and enter again four will come because four is three times that is a mode so there is a mean there is a mode there is a standard deviation and uh, sigma which we can use there is a variance okay these are the concepts are there in the statistics and if you go and type here again the st statistics functions there are so many statistics functions are there but uh, if i talk now you definitely ask the formulas and all so those formulas we can explore it later and uh, we can see yeah these these things like you can see here a real uh, variance okay you can you can you can also get these functions names here rvs standard deviation variance so many things are there right but you'll we'll explore it guys these things and it comes to the yeah date mode is a data which occurs more than number of time yeah i can i can say that occurrences are repeated whatever it is yeah so these are the abbreviations guys when you talk about the statistics uh because we should know what is queenness and uh, what is the cumulative distribution function this we talk in the probability concept what are the random variables okay what is the probability distribution what are the types of the distributions we'll speak in that uh, probability concepts in the maths so once we understand our, and we'll come back to the scipy or like stat models there is another package name called the stat models we'll use it the, that package also we'll finish it off these things 
i hope you got some idea now okay and some of the things which is not really required for example this compressed spats this is this is not required optimization is some more somewhere it is required but if you are interested you can go and explore this is something which is related to the physics and everything okay so like that is there guys but i can go and explain few of the things when we are going to discuss about the uh, statistics and the maths okay